I'm Arpita Kalwa and in this video lecture I'm going to continue with my discussion on history of theater. In the last video lecture I've already talked about the emergence of drama, then I talked about Greek theater, theater which came up during the Middle Ages, then later I talked about the Renaissance and about the Jacobian age. Now in this video lecture I'm going to talk about restoration theater and theater which followed restoration age but before we talk about restoration theater it is first important to understand that why theaters were banned what was the reason why theaters were banned from 1642 to 1660 because after jacobian age came the reign of king charles the first and something happened during the reign of charles the first which led to the ban of theaters so, in order to summarize the entire story, I would like to tell you that King Charles I had problems with Parliament, due to which Parliament removed him from the throne and Parliament took the charge. And Parliament was dominated with Puritans. Thus, Puritanism spread in England from 1642 to 1660. As you know that Puritans were against theatre, they were extremely rigid devotional people and due to their strict religious belief, they did not like theatres, just like theatres were not liked by Roman Catholic Church. Similarly, even Puritans did not like theatre and Oliver Cromwell, who was the protector of England when Charles I was removed from the throne, during that time we find that Oliver Cromwell banned the theatre for next 18 years. Later, after 18 years, when Charles II, who is the son of Charles I, was restored to the throne, theatres were reopened and then came Restoration Age. But before that, you must also remember the thing that Restoration Age somewhere was very much influenced by French ideals because King Charles II had his upbringing in France. So he was quite influenced by the French manners and thus you find influence of French manners in the Restoration Theatre as well. When theatres opened in 1660, two important changes come. Number one first change was that women became a part of theatres. So they were acting also and they also started their journey as a playwright and that is when Afra Ben was the first female playwright and she wrote this fabulous work called Rover. So first important change is that females made their entry into the stage. The second important change which happened during this period was that comedy of manners which is a new set of theatrical performance started during this period. Comedy of Manor was started by George Etheridge in his work called Love in a Tub. And this Comedy of Manors talked about the elaborative style of uh, high class people. And you'll find that all the theatre, which was theatrical performance, which was a part of Restoration Age, only focused on the manners of high class people. And they only kind of stick to the subject of high class men, aristocratic families and their lifestyle. So they had no moral message, they were purely written for entertainment purpose. And that is what angered Jeremy Collier with, due to which he wrote this wonderful pamphlet called Immortality and Profaneness in English Stage. So in this pamphlet he criticized the theatres which were written during Restoration Age. And thus we can see that Restoration Comedy and Restoration Theatres are no, not so much appreciated even now. They are counted as the inferior form of drama. We celebrate Elizabethan Theatre, we celebrate Jacobian Theatres, but hardly people praise the plays which were written during Restoration Age. So this was about the Restoration Theatre. Now let's see how theatre moved forward. After Restoration Age came the Age of Enlightenment. And during the Age of Enlightenment, we don't find great playwrights coming in because the energy of all the great writers were focused more on writing prose pieces. It was a time when novels started and people celebrated the written word. So people started celebrating novels, pamphlets, essays. So it was a time when all these things were in the full bloom. Later came Romantic Age and during Romanticism, when it started in Germany and then came back to England, we find that plays were written which were said to be melodramas. So all the romantic plays fall under the category of melodrama. Melodrama means a kind of play in which hero always succeeds. 
okay and all these plays had a common theme that they showed how a hero used to struggle with the unjust society so that theme was very common during the plays which were written during romantic age uh, we have two great romantic writers that you must remember two great romantic uh, playwrights that you should definitely read if you are preparing for ugc net english one is johann wolfgang von goethe who has written a famous play called faust which you can see how it is connected with dr faustus the second important playwright is alexander dumas who has written a play called three musketeers now if you have ever watched the movie slumdog millionaire i'm pretty sure that you must know about this work three musketeers because there was a reference in the movie about this book so these two writers were extremely marvelous and they were writing uh, some really really amazing plays you can get a list of all the important writers playwrights poets and novels that you must study if you are preparing for ugc net english on my website arpitakarwa.com there's a list of 700 writers which i cover as a part of my online course if you like that list you can even subscribe to my online audio course in which i give you detailed notes audio lectures on all these writers so coming back to the discussion on the romantic age you might not come across great romantic writers from england but romanticism was a vast movement uh, it started in germany and it spread across europe so there were so many other playwrights who were writing in other parts of europe during the same period and they were working hard in order to create some really marvelous plays which we celebrate even today after romanticism came the literary movement of realism now realism is a movement which was a reaction towards romantic idealism so in romanticism everything was glorified and people used to worship nature and find solace in nature whereas realism in the plays written as a part of realism uh, theatrical group we find that those plays were dark and they talked about dark human truths just like if you look at plays of anton chekhov who was a realist writer who wrote this wonderful play called cherry orchard on the other hand we had other writers like leo tolstoy who started the entire genre of psychological realism in russia so he began writing plays which talked about characters life basically these plays scooped up the characters life their inner uh, thinking psychological processes so all these things were a part of realism which started just after romanticism ended influenced by realism came another theatrical group which is called naturalism naturalism and realism both have so much in common both of them depicted truth both of them depicted the honest picture of society and naturalism was quite influenced by charles darwin's theory of survival of fittest we also find that when you read more about naturalist theater you see that almost all the plays written under naturalist theater talked about how class and hierarchy is inescapable and we cannot escape it we cannot uh, get out of it and how they serve as barriers to our success so that is the common theme which was taken up by naturalist writers as a part of naturalist theater study you must remember these two works The first work is an essay which is written by Emile Zola called Naturalism in Theater in which he talks about the traits that you must remember uh, which are part, form a part of naturalist theater the second important work that somewhere uh, tells you or summarizes the entire naturalist theater is Augustine Burns play Miss Julie if you read this play you will be able to connect so much with naturalism and you will see almost all the characteristics of naturalist theater in this play so make sure that you remember these two works emile zola's naturalism in theater and august fingerl's myths julie naturalism was going on at its own pace but on the other hand we find that as world war 1 started the entire humanity was shocked to see the repercussions the entire humanity was shocked to see how technology can lead to such a great war and this led to another theatrical group which started writing about common man and we had writers like arthur miller t s eliot we have writers like tennessee william who were writing about common man and arthur miller has written this beautiful essay which is called tragedy and common man in which he says that theater must depict the plight of common man so the entire focus 
of the theater shifted to common man you can see how during the restoration period people were talking about high class people aristocratic people and now in the modern period people are only talking about common man like you and me so this was the central idea of the modern theater they talked about the sense of alienation the pain that a modern man went through dheere dheere we find that theater progresses more and then comes theater of absurd which talks about how the entire human existence has no meaning everything is so absurd there is no meaning there is no truth everything is shattered sense of alienation is dominating this world and this was celebrated in the plays of samuel beckett harold pinter so this is how theater moves now if you look from the beginning you will see that theater has progressed a lot from the time when theater was performed as a part of greek culture and to if you compare it to today's scenario you see that there are so many changes which happened over a period of time some changes became part of the theatrical culture while others were rejected some changes came sustained over a period of time and later it was rejected because they became outdated and this is how drama kept on progressing there are a lot more topic that i'll be exploring in my video lectures so stay tuned to my channel do subscribe to my channel so that you are notified every time i post a video i post videos every saturday and every sunday exclusively for net aspirants and i would be really appreciative if you can give this video a big fan thumbs up and you can also share your views in the comment section below you can also go to my facebook instagram and google plus pages and look at the go net quiz that i'm providing if you like that quiz you can share and like those pages so that other people are also benefited out of it you can also visit my website wherein i have posted all the important uh, question papers i've also posted all the important updates which are relevant for UGC net english literature apart from that you can also go and check a list of writers that you must study if you are preparing for UGC net english so till the time we meet next happy learning keep loving literature and stay tuned to arthakarwa.com